AFTV Mo, um, first of all, I want to say congratulations. I know that you had a little baby. Um, actually, last week, wasn't it, when I went to get you on the fan cam, mm. you said, uh, Robbie, sorry, I can't do it right now. I'm in the hospital. I was like, oh, yeah. it's coming. It's coming. So right? Monday, 6.40 a.m. on the 1st of March, the next Bukayo Saka was born. So, <laughs> yeah, look- I'm just in um, I'm just in dreamland at the moment. It's like nothing else I've ever experienced. I've just uh, yeah, it's fantastic love with the little guy, and Arsenal could have done whatever the hell they wanted. You know, this week they could have lost ten 0 today against Burnley, and I would have been like, ah, oh, you know what? It's not that bad. So right now, it's going to be hard for me to to really feel it how I usually feel it because I'm just on cloud nine. Hmm. I, I, listen, I'm not too sure. After today's performance, maybe it might not be a good idea to call it Bukayo Saka because <laughs> the two of those chances that he missed, you yeah. know. Um, but listen, um, yeah, congratulations once again. What did you make of it today? Well, on Bukayo Saka, you know, I, I did say in the past that he will have a bad spell. And I, I made this point in a, you know, a few weeks ago we spoke and I said, and then it's up to the fans to stick by him. So for me, this could be the first game of a bad spell for him. We don't know. You know, obviously no one's going to get on his case right now because it's just one bad game after so many incredible performances. But just carry on supporting the kid. He's proved himself now as one of the hottest young prospects in Europe. We're very lucky to have him and we should support him as such. All right. What about Granit Xhaka though? I mean, this is not the first time he's made it. Listen, he's, he's actually been playing quite consistently in recent times, but a little bit of an error from him last week and then today, I mean, what was he doing? You know, literally handed Burnley had him, handed Burnley a point in the game, didn't he? You know, if, if that was Thomas Partey that did it today, we'd turn around and we'd be like, you know, that's awful. He needs to never do that again, basically. Like, even once is too much. But instead, we're talking about Granite Xhaka, who has done this so many times. No player, if I'm not wrong, has conceded more goals via errors for his team than Granit Xhaka since he joins, joined the league. And then, yeah. with that in mind, if you really focus on that statistic, if you're Granit Xhaka and you know you're top of that league table, it's an awful place to be, surely you don't do things that he does in games. Surely you don't go and make that pass. I, I don't understand why it hasn't fundamentally changed him as a player to be more cautious in those types of situations. I, I don't understand it at all. I, I, you know, I'm, I've given up on him learning his lesson. This, so this has not changed my opinion of Granit Xhaka at all. It has, you know, my opinion of him has been there long before this because, you know, there were many errors he's conceded prior to this where I've thought to myself, well, it was just Granit Xhaka. So this is just another one on that list and doesn't change my opinion. But when uh, Arteta is picking him and he does this, None of us can really be surprised. You know, there's no point in us complaining after the event. He's had a, a decent run of form or whatever recently, Granit Xhaka. We always, always knew this moment was coming. And I realised that Arsenal have done a lot of business in transfer windows. You can't, they can't do everything all in one go. But next season, if we are seeing this continue, then it's on Mikel Arteta. If he can't you see... To, yeah, you have to say at the moment, though, he seems like, um, seems like Mikel Arteta's favourite player. Because I think they said he's played more minutes than any other Arsenal player this season. You know, he, he's a mainstay of Mikel Arteta. I remember when he first came in, he said, no, this guy, is, he's my guy. There's no chance I'm getting... Because remember, there was talk of us moving him on at that time. Mm. And Arteta said no. And then literally, even when other players are rested, and st- he's never rested. He plays yeah. every single game. So maybe yeah. he won't move him on in the summer. Granted by name, granted by nature. The boy stays fit and, you know, he's very robust. But un- un- unfortunately, his um, mentality is not the same as his physicality. And that's where he lets us down. So, yes, we'll play every week, but he cannot be relied upon in in the game. Yes, he can be relied upon to, you know, play the game sort of thing. Now, I, I just get fed up of it, Robbie, because, you know, today... We can talk about various things. We're going to talk about the fact that Granite Xhaka made the mistake. We can either talk about VAR, which should have had a penalty. We can talk about the missed chances. There's various, various factors, right? But the ones that we're in control of, in my opinion, that I mean, the chances that we had, 
we should do better with, 100%. VAR, we don't have any control over, but picking Granit Xhaka is very much under our control. He should absolutely be moved on. When a lot of people were trying to say like, oh, look, you know, what the fans know, Granit Xhaka has been incredible the last, you know, 10 games or whatever. You know, I'm just kind of sil silently sitting there saying, okay, we'll see, you know, it will happen. And, you know, it will be the same with someone like David Luiz, in my opinion. There will be another error, you know, a big error, very unforced um, later on down the line. William, I expect him to go on to bad form or whatever. And it's just these sorts of things where if you want to be a killer club, if you really want to be a killer club, we should not be giving this level of grace to senior players. Where they young prospects, especially out of our academy, I would say, yes, give them that extra bit of time and support. Even if it's a young prospect like Saliba, not from our academy, I'd say, look, they're learning their trade. They'll learn from it. These senior players, we need to understand right now, this is part of their makeup. They're not going to change. All right, let me, um, you touched on it. So before we go there, we got, I've got to ask you about it because everybody's been talking about it today. Even a lot of the guys that don't normally go on about um, refereeing decisions and VAR and that, but the penalty that wasn't given that seemed pretty obvious to everybody, um, what did you make of it? Well, it's just a clear penalty, isn't it? But, but Robbie, I remember you and I in the, uh, recently, we kind of said to each other, like, we actually don't know what the handball rule is anymore. It, it's, it's honestly, it's baffling. I, and that I, cements it today. I, even if I was starting to think, all right, well, maybe now I do, now today, yeah. after today's decision, I am 100% not sure what a penalty for a handball yeah. is. And it's, it's funny, isn't it? Like, IFAB have come out recently and relaxed the rules a little bit, I think, where if there's an unintentional handball and it leads to a goal, the goal still stands now or, or something like well, that. They're gonna do that at, the, at the end of the season, they're going to bring that in. Right, OK, fair after, enough. After that, after that horrendous one last week at Fulham, we, we, the, um, during the week of Fulham and Tottenham. But yeah, this handball rule... Apart from that, <laughs> apart from... You know, the thing is about that one, right, is that that one was a horrendous decision, but if the referees, you can't blame them because that's the rule. Yeah. So it's the rule makers. But on these ones, I genuinely don't know what the rule is. Yeah. What is handball? They've got to define it. They've yeah. got to define it so that we know. Remember before, we used to know that if it's not deliberate, it's not handball. Yeah. But now I do not know. People are saying, um, we've heard this a lot of this season about hands being in an unnatural position. Now, as I've been kind of making the joke in a lot of the fan cams that the only unnatural, the only natural position his arms could have been in if he was trying to be in an aeroplane or a hmm. glider or something with his hands wide out. Yeah. So yeah. how is it? It's just very yeah. frustrating that it wasn't it's, given. There's no really, consistency. Yeah, it's really clear to all of us today that, yes, that should have been a penalty. And it's frustrating because VAR went and got it bang on with um, the goal line clearance from Peter. Yeah, yeah, because he hit his shoulder. You can see that's a correct decision, yeah, and that's VAR at its best. Yeah, you've got to hand it, and then you see VAR at its worst. Uh, you know, in in this the other case, yeah, you've got to hand it to people's incredible goal line clearance, and that worked perfectly. But it's just Arsenal's luck, isn't it? Why do we never get the rubber to green? But we have to say, we did not lose today because of VAR, no excuses. We lost today because of defensive error and poor finishing. That's why we lost today. We had the chances to win the game. So we have to look at ourselves. But what I would say, I'm not as downbeat today because we were bashing that door down. We were bashing that Burnley door down. At least we saw a real uh, desire and ability to win the game. Whilst in previous games, I've thought to myself, we just got that through the skin of our teeth, for example. So positive signs. Hopefully we iron out the inconsistencies in our team that come by virtue of people like Granit Xhaka. And hopefully VAR irons out their consistencies and we're in a better place this season. But a win or a draw in this game against Burnley in the Premier League this season means nothing because our Premier League season is over. If this happens in the Europa League, different story. That's the one we need to win. OK, well, Mo, listen, once again, congratulations. I can hear Zara calling you there. You've got some nappies to change. Exactly. So, um, <laughs> but congratulations once again. Cheers, man. Appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. Today's show is sponsored by Profit Accumulator, the UK's number one match betting service. So what is match betting? It's a method that's used by individuals to profit from free bets 
and incentives offered by bookmakers. By leveraging one bookie's offer against another bookie's offer, it's possible to ensure that the odds are in your favor. And when you sign up to Profit Accumulator, they will walk you through how to do match betting with their easy to follow video guides. Profit Accumulator have a friendly seven day a week customer support team that will help you with any questions that you might have. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description and you can start your Profit Accumulator journey today and you won't regret it.